Good morning. Wonderful, you all are awake and it's Friday. <laughs> good morning. Very good. First of all, I want to say thank you on behalf of Sheriff Martin Cuellar for joining us this morning for our 27th annual proclamation for domestic violence. We are extremely excited for you all to be here today and to have a full room of so many friendly faces. I can't begin to express our gratitude to our media partners and our local organizations that help us spread the dangers of domestic violence, as well as the resources that many local officials, both city, county, and organizations as well, provide to these families that are victims of domestic violence. I will begin by having Dr. Julie Vassan come up for our invocation. If you all can please stand. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure and a privilege for me to stand here in front of you and to be given this honor to bring our Lord and Creator into this room with us. So let's take a moment as we place ourselves before him as his family that we are. Heavenly Father and everlasting God, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for all these people in this room that you have brought together as your family. Thank you for those that could not be with us today, wherever they might be. May you protect them and guide them so that we can see them safe and sound on their return. Today, Lord, we gather as your family. We know what this means for all of us. It's 27 years. But for you, God, the time stops. The time stands still because your blessings are everlasting, your protection is always there, and your guidance and wisdom is ours. Your scripture says, Lord, Call on me and I will answer. So today, God, with all due respect, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I am asking of you the following. We come before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and we ask that you comfort and protect all children, women, men, and families who are suffering because of domestic violence. Give them peace. We ask that you protect every first responder, every law enforcement officer, everyone in the legal system as they answer the call for help. We also pray and ask for your guidance and wisdom as we continue to work together as your family for the good of mankind. And with all of that being said, God, I ask you to send your angels, your Holy Spirit to fill this room so that when we walk out of here, we walk away with a clean heart peaceful mind, and the strength that can only come from your heaven so that we can continue to do your will and not ours. I pray and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Webb County Sheriff's Office Color Guard, followed by the National Anthem by Ms. Alisa Sanchez. Color Guard. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star 
spangled banner yet wave o'er the lands of the free and the home of the brave. You may be seated. Before we get started, I'm going to recognize some county and city officials that are with us today. We have Webb County Commissioner Precinct 2, Rosaura Wawi Tijerina. <laughs> Webb County Attorney Marco Montemayor. <laughs> Representing District Attorney Isidro Chilo Ananis, we have Attorney Pedro Guajardo. Webb County District Clerk, Esther de Goyado. <laughs> Representing Constable, Precinct 4, Herald de Valley, we have Captain Jorge Reyes. <laughs> Representing Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Juan Paz, we have Jesus Martinez. We have Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Oscar Liendo. We also have City of Laredo Mayor, Dr. Victor Trevino, who's accompanied by his wife, Rosaura Maria Marquez de Trevino. City of Laredo Police Department Chief, Miguel Rodriguez. Representing Congressman Henry Cuellar, Melissa Peña. We have LISD Chief Doreen Hale. Public Information Officer Silvia Abrego, representing UISD Chief Aaron Salazar. Councilwoman Daisy Campos. Webb County Fire Marshal Felix Nunez. Once again, we have Dr. Julie Bassan. She is the Executive Director for AHEC and the Domestic Violence Coalition. <laughs> Representing Laredo Crime Stoppers, Alma Gloria Hinojosa. I also kindly ask that all members of the Domestic Violence Coalition please stand as we all give you a big round of applause. <laughs> Once again, to everybody involved in the Domestic Violence Coalition, we thank you for your hard work and the effort that has been put into the domestic violence all year round because we know it's a never ending job. I would also like to give a big thank you to our Webb County Sheriff's Office, Esmeralda Melendez for putting this wonderful Domestic Violence Coalition Proclamation event. Please give her a big round of applause. Before we proceed, we have a wonderful video lined up for you all. If you can please make your way over or look, look over to the two TVs that we have ahead to, to play the video. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. If I can please have Webb County Attorney Marco Montemayor come up to say a few remarks. Good morning. Uh, kind of still gathering myself after that video. Pretty powerful video. Um, so let everybody take a moment. Um, so good morning, first of all. Thank you to uh, Sheriff, your staff, your office for obviously hosting this event, putting it together. Um, this is a very significant issue, um, not just in our community, but you know, worldwide. Um, you know, I wanna welcome all organizations, both that are here and those that, that aren't able to join us here today. Um, I wanna thank everybody for what y'all do on a daily basis, day in, day out, to uh, help combat this issue, whatever services you provide or whatever role you play. Um, you know, thank you for what you do and it does make a difference. 27th Annual Proclamation. Since the mid 80s, uh, October has been celebrated as uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And as we know, domestic violence takes place every minute of every day in every corner of this world and it does not discriminate. DV usually, domestic violence usually occurs behind closed doors and it's affected millions millions of people, millions of lives, which is why we need to continue to educate, spread awareness, as well as to continue to provide services and support to victims. Huge strides have been made, both in legislation and services, support, programs, many areas, but we still have a lot of work to do and we must continue the fight. You know, at the Webb County Attorney's Office, we work with uh, our youth and our families um, in, or, in, in trying to break that cycle of, of domestic violence within, within the family unit. We try to spread awareness, educate uh, both the community and the schools um, about this issue in hoping to break that cycle. We work in collaboration with many of you, of, of you all, uh, many of the agencies that help provide the support and services that they need. We work in conjunction with you all and uh, obviously those partnerships are, are instrumental and, and very vital to, to not just our office, but to this community. So, you know, this month, yes, it's, it's about reflecting, it's about celebrating, but it's also about honoring. Let's not forget, it's about honoring. And as we take this month and this time, let's not forget to, to honor and pray, especially for those victims that were not able to to be with us that suffered the ultimate price of domestic violence. But let's also renew our, our dedication and let's challenge one another day in, day out to continue the fight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montemayor. At this time, I call upon Webb County Assistant District Attorney Pedro Guajardo. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Pedro Guajardo, I'm a Chief Prosecutor at the DA's office. First of all, thank you, Sheriff, for inviting us to this great event. Mr. Anlis couldn't make it today, he's out of town, and he asked me to say a few words. Gotta use my glasses. <laughs> As we all know, domestic violence is not just a private matter. It's a social issue that demands our collective attention and action. Behind the statistics lie real people, often women and children, uh, suffering in silence. We must always stand up, speak out, and work together to try to end the cycle of abuse. We have to be their voice. Let us remember that domestic violence knows no boundaries. It affects people of all backgrounds, races, genders, and ages. It's time to create a world where every home is a safe haven. So what do I mean by that? What can we do? Well, we can do a little bit more. Maybe take a, an extra step. I believe that everybody working in a domestic violence case, from beginning to end, responding officers showing up to the scene, the CSI taking pictures, 
the counselors, Casa Misericordia, all the way to the attorneys, to the judges, all of us can do a little bit more. If we do the, the standard minimum, it's somewhat satisfying because we know we're helping a victim, a survivor of a domestic violence case. But what do we do a little bit more? Take an extra step. I can guarantee you, and I promise you that the results are gonna be awesome. You're gonna see great positive results. So what are we doing at the DA's office? What are we, are we doing a little bit more? Yeah, we're opening eight to five. We see all kinds of victims from domestic violence to child abuse, you know, all survivors from eight to five. But is that it? Do we close at eight, I mean, uh, at five? No. We also have a, uh, a joint intake program. We, we're, we kind of have a hotline to law enforcement officers. So if there's something going on at three in the morning, a deputy shows up at three in the morning to a domestic violence house, and they're investigating the case, they know the facts, but if they want a second opinion, they can always call us. So the, so the DA's office can be involved, can have some, an opinion and input at three in the morning on a domestic violence case. What else can we do? What else are we doing? Well, if a defendant gets arrested for a domestic violence case, whether it be a misdemeanor or felony, we give that victim, that survivor, an emergency protective order, whether it be 30, 60, or up to 90 days. The magistrates are involved, the sheriff's department, LPD. You know, so that's what we're doing. We're doing a little bit more. So what if the responding officer that shows up to a scene talks to the victim, takes the report, and he's like, you know what, we already got probable cause. Let's arrest the guy and let's leave. But what about if he does a little bit more, takes that extra step. There's a 13-year-old, a 16-year-old that witnessed the assault, that witnessed the dad hit the mom. Well, talk to them. Ma'am, is it okay if I talk to the kids? Yeah. And get a voluntary statement. What about if the neighbor call? Hey, I'm calling because I, I, I'm, I'm hearing screams next door. The, I believe the father's insulting the mom and threatening her. LPD shows up or the sheriff's department show up. They talk to the victim. Yeah, he threatened me that he was gonna kill me. Okay, but what about, okay, that's enough. But what about if he takes an extra step and goes knocks at the neighbor's house? Now the neighbor's gonna give a voluntary statement. Just a little bit more, the CSI, the counselors, everybody, if we take just a, an extra step, I can, guarantee you, I can guarantee you the results are gonna be positive and you're gonna be so much satisfied than just doing the bare minimum. What am I doing? Let's say I get a protective order, a class A family violence. If I give this applicant a two year protective order, hey, I've done my job, bare minimum, standard. But what about if I look at the facts, you know, a little bit closely and I look at the, at the pictures and I say, you know what? I wanna give this applicant a finding of family violence in the protective order. Well, if I give this applicant an agreed protective order, it's gonna take me about 20 minutes. They call my case, I'm out in 10 minutes. But now I want a finding of family violence. I need to prove it up. So that case might be at the end of the docket. Maybe at 11, 11.30, we're gonna have to wait. Or if the docket goes to noon, we're gonna have lunch, I'm gonna be back at 2 p.m. So I'm gonna waste, I'm gonna spend the whole morning just because I wanna take that extra step and do a little bit more. So what does this mean? I encourage all of you to please, please, please take an extra step and do a little bit more from beginning to end, from the responding officer, from the partners that show up, to the CSI, to the counselors, to Casa Misericordia, to the attorneys, to the judge. If we can do a little bit more, I guarantee you that the numbers will decrease of domestic violence. And you're gonna feel so much better because you're helping that victim, that survivor in domestic violence. Sheriff, again, thank you for allowing us to be here in this special event, and thank you for all of you who, who listened and, and, and showed up. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Mr. Guajardo, and I agree. We should all take that extra step. Whether you, you work in law enforcement in an organization, or if you just have a friend or family member that may be in danger. If I can please have City of Laredo Mayor, Dr. Victor Trevino. Thank you very much uh, and good morning everyone. Good morning. Thank the uh, Sheriff Department for, thank, thank you Sheriff Mantito for uh, putting this together. I think it, it is very important 
And we need to look at this as something that is uh, a, a situation that needs to be addressed because we frequently see cases like that in the hospitals and people try to deny it or try to deviate the actual happening. The mothers try to say that the child fell or they, the child broke his arm or fell and hit his face. And we know better, we know better. And anytime there's a child with injuries, we suspect abuse at home. So with this in mind, we live in a unique area here in Laredo, beautiful culture along a Rio Grande. But like every community, we need to address the challenges we have with the domestic violence. And it is important that we come together in our community and empower survivors of domestic violence and raise accountability of the batterer and also our commitment to work in Laredo with the community to educate our children because too often they're exposed to what the batterer does at home and they learn this behavior. And when they grow up, they could do the same thing. So we need to educate our children also and young adults that this is not a way to conduct yourself. I do wanna thank everyone in here today for the leadership on this issue and look forward to progressing these challenges but some of the things that we have noticed that uh, are evident uh, if the, is the causes, the currents, the currents is too frequent. The police show up to houses too frequently for family violence. Uh, a lot of things have to do with stress. There's a lot of stress, uh, just uh, having a family and dealing with a family, responsibilities causes stress to everyone. We understand that. Family challenges, relatives, people that uh, meddle into uh, private affairs of the family, that causes also a lot of situations. Financial responsibilities, we all have those responsibilities, but people sometimes can't handle those and that provokes that. Living conditions, of course, poverty is another factor. Uh, marital incompatibility, sometimes there's, the marriages are not compatible and that, that provokes that. Overburdened responsibilities, a lot of, uh, maybe uh, the father or the mother has two or three jobs and that's a lot of responsibility and then to come home with family problems, that could provoke that. And one of the things that is very important we haven't talked about is drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol trigger this very frequently. Somebody gets drunk and it starts getting violent, hits the wife or vice versa and there is a culture of acceptance here. We need to address the acceptance because when you ask the wife what happened, oh, well, he got drunk and he hit me, but it's okay, he loves me. It's okay. I mean, that, but he's a good person. He's a good person. He, he just got drunk and did this, but, but he's a good man. He provides for the family. So all these things are acceptance and it, is, it should not be like that. We have to avoid the compliance issue. People get compliant to it, and that, that is not right. So we have to address all these issues. With that in mind, I'm here to just state what we think about uh, the situation, and any violence should be reported, Webb County Violence Coalition and the City of Laredo. Thank you very much. I can please have Laredo Police Department Chief Miguel Rodriguez to come up to say a few remarks. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Well, I had a, uh, a speech, uh, but it kind of went along the same notes that Pedro here uh, said a little while ago. So I'm going to be brief. Uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, and I would like to, first of all, honor the victims that have uh, fallen to this terrible, terrible thing that, uh, that we would like to say we always like to control but, and contain. But I know that we're heading in the right direction when it comes to domestic violence, all the law enforcement, the advocates, the domestic violence coalition, all the heads of departments. You know, we, we, we talk about this and we always ask the questions, what can we do better? What can we change to decrease the numbers? And I'm going to give you a little bit of statistics 
uh, from Laredo PD as to the number of calls that we get for domestic violence. 2021, 6,485 calls of domestic violence. 2022, 6,758 calls of domestic violence. Year to date, we've had 5,185 calls of domestic violence. That is a lot of calls. But at the same time, we in the department and in talking about this, we say to each other, it is good to a certain extent because now they're reporting and that's what we want for them to report. So an increase in numbers doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It can mean a good thing. So because they're reporting, what are we doing with those reports? So in the reporting part, we filed 2,812 reports in 2021, 3,073 in 2022, Year to date, 2031, by the end of the year, we're gonna have more reports filed, which is also a good thing. Arrest, 873 in 2021, 850 in 2022. Year to date, 765. So by the end of the year, we're gonna have more arrest. But at the same time, we also need to track what kind of program we put that family through. So in taking that extra step, in having conversations with the administration that I currently uh, have in place right now, we've talked about highest, highest threat. What are our highest threat in our community? We talk about fentanyl, we talk about cartel uh, involvement, we talk about drugs, we talk about a lot of things, but the number one thing that the focus of this department has come to number one has been domestic violence, dating violence, and any family violence that happens because we believe that, some, that that is the main cause of criminal activity of children that are involved in that type of setting. We need to change that. And how are we gonna change that? By going and stopping the violence in, inside the households. So it is very important that we engage in that, not only from the police department's perspective, but as a collaborative uh, effort, not only from the police department, from the district attorney, the web county attorney, our elected officials, our community leaders, in all law enforcement to make sure that we look at those things a different way to be able to decrease the numbers uh, because it is important to stop the suffering, the suffering from those victims because they suffer day in and day out. I worked the division, the Special Victims Unit for seven and a half years. I know firsthand how those victims feel. And I can tell you that it is very sad when somebody comes to you and says, sir, it's been 10 years, I can't anymore. 10 years. That is terrible when, if you feel terrible when you, when, because you feel that you should have helped her a long time ago. So we're gonna do more. We're fully committed at the police department to do more, to take that extra step, but we wanna do it together with everyone here. I thank you, I thank everybody for here being here today, and I especially wanna thank the sheriff for inviting us here and speaking about this, and continue creating that awareness, continue pushing social media, continue pushing all the channels to make sure that everybody knows about this. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. If I can have Casa de Misericordia Program Director come up to say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Maria Elena Arambula, Nena Arambula. I'm Casa de Misericordia, Director of Programs. And I'm here representing Sister Rosemary Walsh, who could not be here physically, but her heart is here. She always says, I don't have to be there uh, physically as long as you know the why. And we all know the why, why we're here this morning. Mr. Guajardo, thank you for the challenge and the invite to take that extra step. Mayor, thank you for um, mentioning that young children need the interventions. Casa de Misericordia is proud to say that we work in prevention. We need to stop it before it begins, and we're trying to do that. Um, also, Mayor, thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, Sheriff, thank you for putting this event together. It's very significant for us, the platform to be able to speak and say what we do. Casa de Misericordia is the only um, domestic violence shelter program in an 80-mile radius. And for us, uh, Mayor, uh, the acceptance part 
it doesn't matter as long as the person that we have in front of us is willing to have a conversation about the services that we provide. We put them on the table and we let them choose uh, at their own terms and at their own time, at their own pace. Uh, and then I put a little, um, few words together, if I may. And I'm also going to use my glasses, Mr. Guajardo. <laughs> so, thank you for joining, joining us as we come together to raise awareness about domestic violence in our community. Today, we remember and honor the memory of those we have lost to domestic violence. We show our support for those who are or have gone through it and we work together to prevent it from happening again and again in our futures. We honor victims and survivors by listening to them and honoring their courage to speak up about their experiences. We also honor them by using what they tell us to make our responses better. And by this, we make our community safer. Accept that we can do better. We cannot improve our community if we do not listen to our survivors and their experiences. Make the needed changes and hold one another accountable. As we say every year, we hope that someday we will not need a proclamation to raise awareness in our community about domestic violence. That we're able to close our shelter doors. I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. But until then, we want all, sur all survivors to know and believe that there is help and that we as a community are ready and willing to journey with them in the search of a better life, a life free of violence, free of trauma. Thank you. If I can have Ms. Melissa Gomez come up for her testimony. Hello, good morning. good morning. My name is um, Melissa Gomez. It's not easy being up here. I'm um, representing, not representing, but I'm doing this for the Ramos family. Um, thank you all for putting this wonderful event um, of domestic violence. It is important for us to talk about it. Um, I think the best thing we could do was talk about it and talk about it and not get tired of talking about it. I put something together. It really isn't easy being here. Imagine being in a relationship or just being in love with somebody in exchange for your I love you, you're given a closed fist or foul language instead of when I love you. Many women all over are forced to endure these careless acts of selfishness. This is called domestic violence. And it can come in different forms, from verbal to physical. Just because it is frequently happening does not in any way make it right or acceptable. On March 6th of this year is a day that we will never forget. It was a day that domestic violence took away two amazing people who were loved and cherished by their family and friends. Sylvia Ramos, our Silvita, and Brianna Ramos, our Brie were victims of domestic violence. We don't know why they never said how bad things were, and we'll never know. We are left with so many unanswered questions. Why did it happen? Could we have done more? And like previously said, <laughs> You know, if a neighbor would have called or a neighbor would have talked to us and told us, hey, this happened, you know, recently or 
weeks ago because it does happen. You know, we went back and neighbors did talk to us. You know what? On such this day, we heard this. And we're like, really? Like, why couldn't you say something? Why didn't you call? Why didn't you tell us when we would come visit? Perhaps Brianna was protecting her mom by not saying anything. We'll never know. We need to bring awareness to domestic violence. We need to show people to seek help, that it is okay to talk about it. It is okay to say something. Lately, we use the terms toxico and toxica so lightly. To me, those are horrible words because it is not okay to be in a relationship when someone is toxico or toxica. We need to do better. This is our Selvita and our Brie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Gomez, for standing up here and sharing that story with us today. If I can please have Webb County Sheriff Martin Guayar come up. Thank you very much. I want to thank everybody that's here, all the representatives from the DA's office, the county attorney, city, mayor, thank you. Um, Wowie, thank you very much for showing up. Everybody that's here, thank you. Um, I do want to say something that this is a very serious situation. And I intentionally left Chief Mike Rodriguez out because I want to say something special about him. We work very closely together. We've worked for many years, and I know Laredo is going to be safer because of how we're going to work together and continue to do what's better. You know, and I want to thank you, Chief, for your leadership. I know that you just got appointed, and and um, you know I think the the, uh, the mayor and the councilman did a terrific job on you, and I'm sure there were other other uh, candidates that were very um, qualified. But I know that we are happy with it. We are going to continue to work harder, take that extra step, like you said. You know, we're going to do everything we can for domestic violence. You know, it breaks my heart to see someone come up, you know, for the Ramos family to come and, and you know, say those words, have the courage to come up here and say, you know, those words because we need to stress to the community and this is exactly how we need to do this. You know, um, having the community stick together, having all the uh, people that, all the agencies that are here, you know, that uh, Casa Misericordia, thank you for everything. I can, I can feel Sister Rosemary here. I really can. Because the, one of the things when we're waiting, we're waiting to see who was missing. And I'm like, where's Sister Rosemary? And, you know, and I know she's here with us. You know, so I want to thank everyone that's here. Uh, Julie, beautiful words. Where are you at, Julie? I can't see very well. Um, thank you, Julie, for everything. And you know, it's hard to, you know, to get up here and speak after the chief and the mayor and, and everybody spoke, especially you, Julie. You know, thank you for those words. And I just want to say something to the community out there that we need to stick together. We need to report. We need to stop. You know, we need to stop this this abuse of people out there that are abusing. The video was good. Thank you very much for that. Um, I do want to give some stats, and of course, Chief, it's not nothing near of what you all have here. But just to give you an example, for example, um, last year we had 286 domestic disturbances and 134 civil dispute calls. This year, Till now, we have 247, which is less than the 286, um, and 99 civil dispute calls. 
we need to take the extra step to make sure that we keep it there, that we, that we are you know, below from last year. We need to, but again, as the chief said, you know, we need to have the people also report. So I'm hoping that we're doing that. I'm hoping that we're getting closer to what we need to do so we can put a stop to this cycle. And again, with everybody here, I know we can do this. We can do this because together we'll be stronger, together we can do better for our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff. And before we proceed with our proclamation, I would like for you all to sit back and reflect on the silhouettes that I have to my left and to my right. They have plaques of names of individuals of all ages, like Mr. Montemayor mentioned, that have fallen victims to domestic violence. If you or anyone you know is a victim or is suffering of any sort of violence, please speak up. Social media is a wonderful way, like Chief Rodriguez mentioned. Call a friend, be that helping hand. And sometimes it's our family members, it's our friends, or it's us that are in this very room. And we know it's not easy to speak up and ask for help. It can be intimidating, it can be embarrassing, and it can bring all these mixed emotions. But if you ask for help, we can provide these resources to you and get you out of this terrible situation. Because like I mentioned, sometimes we're advocating for these victims and we want to do everything we can to help them, but yet we go home and it's us. So I want you all to reflect on that. And for those of you that have been victims of domestic violence, I thank you on behalf of myself, the Sheriff's Office, and everybody in here for speaking up and for building that courage, you know, to break that stigma. If I can please have um, Commissioner Wawi Tijerina and our Mayor of Laredo, Dr. Victor Trevino, do our proclamation. This is a joint proclamation. So thank yes. you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of uh, Webb County Commissioner's Court, the Honorable Tano Tijerina, and the rest of the commissioners, and I'm sure on behalf of our Honorable Mayor, uh, Dr. Victor Trevino, we'd like to read this proclamation. But uh, after the proclamation, I would love to have all members of law enforcement here with us. First of all, as law enforcement is very, very dear to my heart, and uh, to me, it's, it's something that I carry with me all the time, including attorneys who prosecute, members of the sheriff, the chief of police, who was my student, chief. I'm so proud of you. Uh, and uh, probation officers, everyone involved, thank you for making a difference in this community. To the members of the victims, uh, we praise you, we, we bless you, and we pray for you all the time. And let's continue taking a step, one more step, to fight domestic violence. Thank you for your beautiful words. Thank you. You want to start? Yes. City of Laredo, Mayor's Office Proclamation. We the people of the City of Laredo and the County of Webb will not tolerate domestic violence in our community. We recognize that domestic violence is destructive for victims, their families, and our community. We recognize that victims of domestic violence experience physical abuse, long-term emotional harm, financial instability, homelessness, and chronic fear. We have come together with open hearts and minds to support victims of domestic violence in our community for over 20 years. We recognize our police and sheriff departments, courts, city, county, social service agencies, and other local governments entities to constitute the first 
of defense to protect and serve victims of domestic violence. Thank you, Mayor. We believe that in working together, we can protect and empower all domestic violence victims. We, we remain uh, determined to move forward. I need my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful proclamation. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> we believe that in working together, we can protect and empower all domestic violence victims. We remain determined to move forward in our mission to stop domestic violence. Now, therefore, we resolve that the County of Webb and the state of Texas and join a national and world leaders, including Intercommission of Human Rights and declare freedom from domestic violence a fundamental human right. We further resolve that the County of Webb will work relentlessly to secure and protect the fundamental human rights on behalf of our citizens. Now, therefore, I, Wawi Tijerina, as Webb County Commissioner for Precinct 2 and on behalf of the Webb County Commissioner's Court, and... Therefore, I, Dr. Victor Trevino, by virtue of the City of Laredo, County of Webb, State of Texas, do hereby proclaim on behalf of the citizens the month of September 2023 as, we say it as Domestic, Domestic Violence, Violence Awareness, Awareness Month. Month. Thank you. Before we call people up, if I can please have a moment of silence. Thank you. If I can please have our elected officials, city officials come up so we can take a photo. Law enforcement. Any law enforcement agencies that are with us today. After we take a photo with them, I'll bring up the organizations, okay? Thank you. Oh, sideways, sideways, man. Sideways. Sideways. Get on the sideways. <laughs> Okay, see? Sí. No me tenga miedo, mira. It's okay, it's okay. Is everybody safe? Right One more.
LISD? Pillar is here. Rosina, LISD. Yes. <laughs> Juan, hace un lado, Juan. <laughs> If everybody can take a seat for just two minutes, we won't take long. Two minutes. Sheriff Martin Cuellar has a gift. If we can please have the Ramos family come up to the podium. Thank you. If you want to make your way over. Lo más agradecer es todo lo que puedo hacer, agradecer y agradecer a toda la gente que en esos momentos fue tan duro para nosotros, familiares, amigos, que si esas palabras que me llevaban a mi casa, esas ayudas, esas aguas, ese lonche, ese, 
las palabras que me daban de mis hijas, yo creo que fue lo que me sostuvo. Porque esta violencia fue muy fuerte, muy fuerte. Que uno siempre lo mira que en la televisión que pasó lejos de aquí, lejos de allá. Y nunca piensa uno que aquí, en esta ciudad, que no estamos tan grandes, que... Y menos que me iba a pasar a mí, a mi familia, esto. Y, pero... Aquí estamos, adelante. Aquí estamos y vamos a seguir. Y esperemos con la ayuda de todos ustedes que esto se vaya haciendo menos, menos. No sé qué pasa, las mentes de las personas. Pero estas son mis palabras que yo puedo decir. Que les agradezco tanto. Muchas gracias de parte del Alguacil a la familia Ramos por compartir esas palabras con nosotros el día de hoy. Eso es todo. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We hope you have a wonderful weekend.